ディズニー・ウィニー・ダ・プーティーガル・トゥーディズニー・ウィニー・ダ・プーティーガル・トゥー Once there was a boy called Christopher Robin He was seven years old and his best friend was a bear called ウィニー・ダ・プー or プー for short プー and his friend Piglet, Rabbit, I r o the Donkey. The and Bouncy Tiger all lived in a wonderful place called the Hundred Acre Wood. Grown ups said that they were only stuffed toys, but Christopher Robin knew better. Pooh and his friends had lots of extraordinary adventures. The one you are going to hear about now happened. Not so very long ago. One morning, Winnie the Pooh woke up feeling cheerful when he looked out of the window and saw what a sunny day it was. He felt even more cheerful, and when Pooh felt cheerful, he liked to make up songs. First, he sang a little song about himself Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. To be little cubby, all stuffed with fluff. I'm Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, weedy, weedy, silly old bear. And then, because his favorite thing in all the world was honey, Pooh sang a little honey song. Isn't, isn't it funny how a bear likes honey? Pass, pass, pass. I wonder why he does. Who was certain that the only reason bees made honey was so that he could eat it? Pooh did eat a lot of honey. Most days he had honey for breakfast, lunch, and tea, and he always had a little something for eleven, eleven, elevenses, and another little something at bedtime. Now, Because Pooh ate so much honey, he was inclined to be a bit fat. So he had to do his stoutness exercises every morning. And when he did his stoutness exercises, he liked to have a good thing. But on this particular morning, he was having a hard time remembering what he was supposed to be thinking about. Oh, bother! Said the bull. I am a bear of very little brain. Maybe it will help if I start the day all over again. So Pooh put on his night shirts and the nightcap again. He was just about to get back into bed so that he could get up again when the door flew open and in bounced the Tigger. Hello, said Tigger. Bouncing straight at Pooh. God, it's me, gasped Pooh. You startled me. It's me, Tigger. T I G G E R. I know who you are. You've bounced on me before, said Pooh. Who are you? asked Tigger. Why? Pooh, of course, said Pooh. What's Pooh? asked Tigger, bouncing onto Pooh's tummy. You are sitting on one, said Pooh. And I must say, it's very uncomfortable. Sorry, said the Tigger, bouncing off. Suddenly, Tigger caught sight of something in Pooh's mirror. It was a strange looking animal with stripes and a big nose. He tried to look fierce, but the other animal just looked fiercer. Pooh, help! Tigger shouted. He was really frightened now. Honey always made the Pooh feel better, so he gave Tigger some honey to calm him down. But Tigger took one taste and made a face. Yuck, he said. Tiggers don't like this icky, sticky stuff. When Tigger looked in the mirror again, he realized that. The strange animal was 
only his own reflection. He quickly forgot all about being frightened and bounced straight back at the pool. I'm Tigger, he shouted. T I G G. I know, I know, said the pool. Haven't you done enough bouncing for one morning? It's just my way of being friendly, said the Tigger. Sitting on your friends doesn't seem very friendly to me, said the pool. Oh, well, said the Tigger. I suppose I'd have to bounce at someone else then. Ta ta, now. Goodbye, said the pool. Tigger's a Suddenly, tiring animals, he thought to himself. Now, where did I leave that honeypot? Tiga went to see Piglet next. Hello, he said, bouncing at Piglet. Piglet was very small and just one bounce was enough to knock him right over. Oh, Tiga, you frightened me, said the Piglet. I wish you wouldn't do that. That was only a little bounce, said the tiger. I'm saving my big bounces for rabbit. Oh, in that case, thank you, said the piglet. But by then, tiger was on his way to rabbit's house. Rabbit was working in his garden. Today he was busy with the carrots. Carrots were rabbit's favorite food and he always grew plenty, so he'd have enough to last the winter. He was very proud of his garden and of his fine crop. Besides carrots, rabbit liked beetroot and cabbage, and he was very fond of honey and condensed milk. He also liked his friend Pooh and Piglet, except when, when Pooh ate too much of his honey and condensed milk. In fact, one of the only things Rabbit didn't like was being bounced at by Tigger. But what Tigger liked best of all was bouncing at Rabbit. Haru, Rabbit, called the Tigger. He bounced right into Rabbit's garden, knocking over everything inside. It's me, Tigger, T O G. Don't bother spelling it, said the rabbit crossly. And don't bounce all over my garden. Just look at it. You could messy, isn't it? said the Tigger. Messy? screeched the rabbit. Messy, it's ruined. And it's all your fault. Why don't you ever stop bouncing? Because, said Tigger, bouncing is what the Tiggers do best. And he sang, Rabbit, his special song. The wonderful thing about the tigers is tigers are wonderful things. Their tops are made out of rubber. Their bottoms are made of springs. They are bouncy, drowsy, flousy, pouncy. Fow, fow, fow. But the most wonderful thing about the tigers is I'm the only one. By the time Tigger bounced away, Rabbit was furious. That bouncing has got to stop, she muttered to himself. But Rabbit wasn't sure how to stop Tigger bouncing. He rummaged through his cupboards and drawers looking for something that might be helpful. But he couldn't find a thing. So he called a meeting and invited Pooh and Piglet. Friends, said the Rabbit when they were all together. I'm sure you'll agree that Tiga is getting far too bouncy. Pooh and Piglet nodded. It's time we taught him a lesson. Rabbit went on. It's time we unbounced the tiger. Yes, said Piglet. But how? My thoughts exactly, said Rabbit. What do you think, Pooh? Pooh always got to sleepy at the meetings of this sort and he was having trouble keeping his eyes open. When he heard his name, he sat up with a start. Extremely, he said. Extremely what? said the rabbit. What you are saying? replied the pool. Undoubtedly. Pooh, said the piglet. 
Weren't you in listening to Rabbit? Of course I was, said the Pooh. I just have a small piece of fluff in my ear. Can you ask him a question again, please, Rabbit? Where should I start from, Pooh? From whenever I got the fluff in my ear, said the Pooh. When was that? asked Rabbit. We were just wondering, said Piglet, who was getting impatient, how we could unbounce a tiger. Suddenly, Rabbit had an idea. I know, he said. We'll take a tiger on a long explorer to somewhere he's never been, and we'll lose him. Lose him? said Big Red, sounded, sounding worried. Oh, well, come back the next day and find him again, said Rabbit. But by then, he'll have learned his lesson. He'll be a different tiger, a humble tiger, a small and sorry tiger, and he'll never bounce at us again now. All in favor of my plan say, Aye, aye, said Piglet. Pooh, said the rabbit. Piglet nudged Pooh awake. Yes, yes, exclaimed Pooh. Certainly, aye. Good, said the rabbit. Motion carried. The next morning was cold and misty. Rabbit was in such a hurry to get started that Pooh forgot to take a little something to eat on the day. Tigger bounced on ahead of the others. He bounced further and further into the mist until he disappeared. My plan is working, said the Rabbit. Is Tigger lost now? asked the Piglet. He will be soon, said the Rabbit, and will be able to go home. Good, said Pooh. It's nearly lunchtime. Suddenly, they heard a voice in the mist. Hello, it called. It was Tigger. Quick, said the rabbit. He mustn't see, see us. Let's hide in that hollow tree trunk. Hello, Tigger called again. Are you there, rabbit? Pooh, piglet, where are you? Tigger was beginning to feel quite worried. We are here, of course, said the Pooh, trying to be helpful. See, keep quiet, whispered the rabbit. You'll spoil everything. Tigger kept looking all around. That's funny, he said, jumping onto the tree trunk. I was sure they were right behind me. Pooh, big red rabbit, say something. Then Tigger's tail got stuck in the, crunk, in the tree trunk. Pooh nearby said something again, but Rabbit stopped him just in time. Tigger pulled his tail free and bounced away into the mist, hoping to find his friends. He's lost for sure now, said the Rabbit. Let's go home. He felt very pleased with himself. But soon, Rabbit was feeling a lot less pleased. You know, he said, as they passed the sand pit. Everywhere looks the same in the mist. That's because we've been past this sand pit before, said the pool. We have, said the rabbit. Well, it's a good thing I know the forest so well, otherwise we might get lost. Now follow me. But no matter which way they went, the three friends always ended up in the same place. By the time they had passed the sand pit five times, Pooh was tired of seeing it. Besides, his tummy was feeling very empty. I've had a good idea, said Pooh at last. Why don't we walk, out, walk, walk away from the sand pit and then try to find it again? Whatever for Pooh? asked the Piglet. Well, if we keep finding the sand pit, when we are trying to find a home. Maybe when we try to find it, we'll find a home instead. I don't see much sense in that, said the rabbit. If I walk away from this sand pit and try to find it again, of course I'll find it. Just wait here and I'll show you. And the rabbit walked off into the mist. 
Pooh and Piglet waited for Rabbit to come back. They waited and waited. They waited a very long time. Pooh had plenty of time to think, and what he thought about was all the honey that was waiting for him in his cupboard at home. Suddenly Piglet said, Pooh, I just heard a funny noise. That was my tummy rumbling, said Pooh. It wants to go home even more than I do. Come on, let's go. But Pooh, do you know the way? asked the Piglet. No, but my tummy will find it, said the Pooh. There are twelve pots of honey in my cupboard, and they are all calling to my tummy. And just now my tummy answered them, All we have to do is to follow my tummy. And we'll be home in time for lunch. So they set off. Pooh could hear the honey pots calling very clearly now, and Piglet kept very quiet so as not to interrupt them. Soon the mist began to lift. And Pooh and Piglet saw where they were, and who was waiting for them. Hello, you two, said the tiger. Where have you been? I've looked everywhere for you. Pooh, whispered Piglet. I don't think Rabbit's plan worked. We've just been finding the way home, Pooh told the tiger, but I think we've lost Rabbit. Don't worry, I'll find him, said the tiger. See you soon, and he bounced away into the forest. Rabbit was lost. He was feeling very small and sorry. Rabbit indeed, when he suddenly saw a familiar figure bouncing towards him. Tiger, Rabbit gasped. You are supposed to be lost. Oh, tigers never get lost, said the tiger. Never? asked the rabbit. Not ever, said the tiger. Now let's go home. And he bounced back through the forest with the rabbit following quickly and humbly behind him. Rabbit and tiger were soon friends again. Nobody stays cross for very long in the hundred acre wood. But Rabbit did get a bit annoyed with Ilo the donkey, because Ilo told Christopher Robin all about Rabbit's plan. However, Rabbit and Ilo soon made friends again. Christopher Robin forgave Rabbit for being cross with Tigger, and Tigger promised to be more careful of where he bounced in future. Pooh was happy to be home, of course, and went straight to his honey pots. He offered Piglet a little something as well, and the two of them had a lovely lunch that day. And that is the end of this story about Tigger and Rabbit and Piglet and, of course, we need a pool. There are many more stories and many more friends to meet. Grown-ups think that all these stories are make-believe and that Christopher Robin's friends are only stuffed toys. But you and I now know better, don't we? Of course we do, as sure as there's a hundred acre wood.